Hey folks, so this is section 2.6. Let's take a look at several examples here. The first one that we're going to do is number 16. And this is a division operation where I am dividing two different functions. So as I showed you in class, the first thing that you want to do when you see something like f of uh, f divided by g of 4, the first thing you want to do is just rewrite it so that it makes it a little bit easier. So we want to rewrite this as f of 4 divided by g of 4. When I do this, uh, all I need to do, we know how to find f of 4. We know how to find g of 4. We're going to use the equations that were at the beginning of this particular section where I was given f of x and g of x, and all I need to do is plug in the 4. So to find f of 4, all I'm going to do is plug that in, so I'll have a 4 squared plus a 3 times 4. Again, that's coming from the original set of instructions. And in order to find g of 4, same thing. I just simply want to plug in my 4 there into the g function. So it's 2 times 4 minus 1. At this point, all I'm doing is just a bit of math and uh, no big deal here. So if we follow our order of operations, our powers come first. And then our multiplying, so up on top we'll have 16 plus 12, down on bottom 8 minus 1. This becomes a 28 divided 7, which is a 4. If you'll take a look at number 18, similar situation, only now we're working with subtraction. So we want to, again, write it first an easier way. So that's going to be f of negative 2 divided by, I'm sorry, minus g of negative 2. So the first thing I want to do, is using the same two functions, Let's find f of negative 2. Now often I'm going to put these in a set of brackets um, just to separate the f function from the g function. This is also going to help me when I have to distribute a negative. Um, it will help me not to forget about that. So my f function then, when I plug in a negative 2 to my f function, that's going to be a negative 2 quantity squared plus 3 times negative 2. And into the g function, don't forget to bring that minus sign down right there in the middle. The g function then 2 times negative 2 minus 1. Now all I need to do is follow my order of operations. So I'm working within the brackets. That first bracket is going to be a 4 minus 6. Don't forget your minus sign in between the second bracket, a negative 4 and a negative 1. Combine your values there. You have a negative 2 minus a negative 5, which will then become a 3. Now if you would go down to number 24. This is going to be an addition question. The difference now is that I don't have a specific value to work with. Now I only have an x. This is f plus g of x, not like a of 4 like I had in the last couple questions. So f plus g of x. So again, the very first thing you want to do is let's rewrite this so that it's a little simpler to look at. f of x plus g of x. And since I was handed f of x in the original set of directions, all I need to do is take that f of x and substitute it in for this f of x. So my f of x is 9 minus 2x. No math there, just a copy. And bring down my plus sign, my g of x. Let's copy that down, and that's going to be a negative 5x plus 2. Again, I like to leave them in separate brackets. This isn't so much of a big deal in the addition questions, but it's definitely a big deal in the subtraction questions. So now um, at this point, the only thing I can do, uh, because I can't work within the bracket, I can't work within the group, but I can combine my like terms. So uh, all I'm going to do at this point then is rearrange. You'll notice that I have the constants, the 9 and the positive 2, and then the 2x terms, the negative 2x and the negative 5x. I'm just combining my like terms. Combine my like terms. I'm going to have 11 minus 7x. Now notice that the directions also said to find the domain. And I gave you two tips for finding domain. And um, when I ask myself those two questions, number one, do I have any variables in the denominator? No, I do not. And number two, do I have any square roots or even roots? No, I do not. So in this particular case, my domain then is just going to be, uh, sorry, my domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. You'll notice that what I did uh, in, in these last two steps is simply rearrange things so that the, and I accidentally erased my uh, 11 there. 
I simply rearranged my terms. There really wasn't any math between those last two steps. And quite frankly, it's not even required. All right, let's look at a multiplication question, still using the same two functions, so I'll leave those uncovered. So we have f times g of x. Let's rewrite it easier, f of x times g of x. Let's plug in our f of x function, so this is 9 minus 2x. We're going to multiply that by negative 5x plus 2, and I want to FOIL. We understand how to FOIL here. So this is going to be 9, uh, well, first inner outer last, first outer inner last, you understand that. And then um, I'm going to combine my like terms. And I'll get 10x squared minus 49x plus 18. Again, the last step was that I was supposed to find the domain. Uh, I'm looking for variables on bottom. I have none. And I'm also looking for square roots. I have none. I have a square, but that's not the same thing as a square root. So my domain, once again, is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Come down to the example here under number 30. This one's a pretty short one. We have a subtraction question once again. So again, write it, separate it out, f of x minus g of x, and let's plug in. And remember that I like to leave these in brackets, but you'll notice I didn't use brackets on this one. The first set, the f of x, already had its own set of brackets, although it wasn't a bracket, it was a square root. And then the g of x only had one thing, so I didn't write a bracket around just the x. There is nothing I can do with this. This is as simplified as it can possibly get. But we do need to worry about the domain here. And in class, I'm going to ex explain this extensively. I have no variables on bottom, but I do have a square root. And so it might be a little confusing that my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. But if you'll remember from the discussion in class, if you'll take a look at just the inside of my square root here, there is no number in the world that can make this equal to zero or can make this equal to a negative number. When I square a number, I always come out with a positive. When I multiply it by a positive four, it's always gonna be positive. And when I add it to a two, it's always gonna be positive. There's nothing in the world I can do to make this negative. So that's why any number in the world is okay. All real numbers is my domain. Come down to the multiplication question. I'm using the same one here. I'll see if I can leave that exposed. So using the same one, we have f of x times g of x. And this is going to be the square root of 2 plus 4x squared times x. The only thing I did in the next step is just simply to rearrange it. I'll put the x out front. It's not necessary, but it's something that I tend to do. And then my domain, again, I have no numbers in a, in a denominator, no variables in a denominator. Um, I do have that square root, but as I just discussed on the last one, there's nothing that will make the inside negative. So domain, again, negative infinity to positive infinity. Then we went into composition in class. So let's take a look at g of f of x. So the first thing we want to do is we want to write this a little easier We're using those brackets. And this will definitely show my order of ops that the f of x is on the inside. So let's take out f of x and let's replace it with what it equals. So over here, f of x was equal to 9 minus 2x. So I took out the f of x and I replaced it with what it equals. Now this is where we went in class through the whole, what's G of nine, what's G of 17, what's G of Coke, what's G of ugly. And so we have here something that says G of ugly. And so we wanna go back up to our G function and we would say that G of ugly is negative five ugly plus two. So that's what I have here, negative five Ugly is the open set of parentheses plus two. Now remember where you find ugly, that always comes from the line above, so we're gonna fill in that empty set of parentheses with nine minus two x, and then all I have to do is some uh, simple algebraic functions just simply to, um, to make it look prettier. So let's go ahead and distribute, and then combine our like terms, and we have 10x minus 43. Once again, we're asked to find the domain, there are no 
uh, numbers in the denominator and there are no square roots. So domain is all real numbers. Number 30. This is that square root question again. So we're looking at f of g. So first, let's rewrite it normally. Let's take out the g of x and replace it with what it equals. So you'll notice here, this is a pure substitution. And this is not f of very ugly. I know that that's normally what we say, but f of x is just simply f of x. So I copy that down and then I ask myself about the domain. And this is the same discussion I had just a few minutes ago. So we have a domain, all real numbers. Then for number 60, this one's a little different. It's f of f of x. So what we're looking at here, let's take out the f of x, that inner f of x, and replace it with what it equals. So now we have f of ugly. f of ugly, going back up to my original here, f of ugly is 2 minus ugly. So you see my open set of parentheses for the, for the ugly. Fill in the ugly with the line above. And then all I have to do is combine like terms. That simplifies this down to x. And I'm supposed to find domain. There's no variable on bottom. There are no square roots. So my domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So this will just walk you through several of the examples in this particular section. If you have any questions about any of them, please feel free to ask in class.